The Quiet Life of Mrs. Brickley. The alarm clock on the bedside table burst into life and an overexcited radio presenter woke Mrs. Brickley from her deep sleep. She came to her senses after a second or two and hit the big red button on top of the alarm clock. The dim yellow light of the digital display read 7am. Perfect, she thought, and threw back the duvet, sliding off the bed, feeling a twinge of excitement in her stomach. She was an English woman in her late 70s, who'd lived in Milan for most of her life after meeting her late husband. These days she lived alone and enjoyed a mostly quiet life that could be expected from someone of her age. But they say that everybody has their secrets and everybody has their story to tell. Mrs. Brickley didn't drink any more than occasionally. She didn't smoke and she didn't take drugs. But she had a habit all the same and she lived for it. She put on a black sweatshirt that was neatly folded on the dressing table and slipped into a pair of lycra jogging pants, which fit snugly against her slim figure. She tied her long grey hair up into a bun and picked up a pair of black trainers that lay by the door. Despite being the only one in the house, she sneaked out of the room on her tiptoes and enjoyed the sound the balls of her feet made as they slapped joyously against the floor. She picked up a small shoulder bag that she'd packed the night before and paused at the front door to slip on her trainers before leaving the house. It was a warm May morning and the streets of Milan were quiet and peaceful. Unlike Mrs. Brickley, who was buzzing with anticipation as she set off towards the old castle, Castello Sforzesco. The early morning sunshine warmed her face a little as she took a shortcut through the park, passing through the castle's courtyard and out through the front gates. There was a huge marble fountain in front of her, whose circular shape and tiered centre made it look like a giant wedding cake when it was working. And in about 45 minutes time, it would be firing impressive jets of water high into the air. But for now, its still surface glistened peacefully inviting her in. She perched on the marble edge of the fountain, took off her shoes and socks, and left them on the side next to her. She lifted up her bare feet and swung herself around 180 degrees, watching as her toes broke the surface of the cool water. It came up to her shins, and she took care not to slip as she stood up and began to wade through the water with gentle steps. It got a little deeper as she moved towards the centre, and the little ripples that she made on the surface licked at the edges of her lycra jogging bottoms. Her eyes squinted at the sun's reflection as she gazed into the water, and it wasn't long until she found what she was looking for. The face of a 50-cent coin shined up at her, and she plunged one hand into the chilly water to pick it up. She rubbed the coin between her thumb and forefinger, and as soon as she dropped it into her pocket, she saw another one twinkling beneath the surface. She grinned with satisfaction and carried on wading through the fountain, collecting all the hopes and wishes the crowds of tourists had thrown in there during the week. A young boy was sat on one of the benches that surrounded the fountain. His legs were too short to reach the ground, so they swung backwards and forwards as he giggled in amazement at the old lady in the fountain. He turned to his parents who were sat next to him, and his eyes practically begged them to let him go in. His father chuckled and shook his head slowly, frowning to let his son know that it was not a normal thing to do, and he slouched with exaggerated disappointment. A pair of passing joggers slowed down to get a better look at Mrs. Brickley, covering their laughter and their rude comments behind their hands. She could hear them, but she didn't care. She just kept her eyes on the water and continued to fill her pockets. About half an hour passed before a young policeman in full navy blue uniform reluctantly strolled up to the fountain, rolling his eyes as he called out to her. 
Excuse me, Signora, he said with just enough authority to pull Mrs. Brickley's gaze away from the water. And she looked at him, giving him an innocent smile the way only an old woman could. I'm going to have to ask you to get out of the fountain, he told her in Italian. A low gurgling sound from one of the water jets interrupted him, and the smile vanished from Mrs. Brickley's face. Not yet, she cried, almost pleading with the fountain itself, as she began to move with great difficulty through the water towards the edge of the fountain and the worried-looking policeman. Water began to spit weakly from the nozzles at the centre as Mrs. Brickley struggled to make her escape. She was weighed down by the coins in her pockets, and the faster she moved, the more the water slowed her down, and the more slippery the bottom of the fountain became. Great columns of white froth gushed into the air as the fountain erupted like a watery volcano. And in the same moment, Mrs. Brickley launched herself over the marble edge and straight into the arms of the policeman, who shouted, Mio Dio! as he caught her in his dutiful arms. She thanked him kindly for his services, and he put her down slowly, holding onto her shoulders until he was sure she had regained her balance. The policeman stared at the wet footprints Mrs. Brickley left on the tarmac as she went to pick up her shoes and socks and dry her bare feet with the little towel she packed in her shoulder bag. That was a little more exciting than usual, she thought to herself, and the coins jingled in her pocket with every step she took on her way home. The little boy had been watching Mrs. Brickley with great interest, as said everybody else that was nearby, and he wondered where she was taking all of the wishes people had left in the fountain. He took a treasured 20-cent coin out of his pocket, and clutched it in the palm of his hand, squinting his eyes as an idea came to him. His parents yelled with surprise as he suddenly made a dash towards the fountain, running up to its marble edge. He closed his eyes tightly and waited for a second before dropping the coin clumsily into the clear water, watching as it made a little splash, then sank to the bottom. Marco, come here right now, his father said sternly and he obediently went back to the bench with a satisfied smile on his face. The following morning, Mrs. Brickley was waiting outside the bank, as a young woman with curly blonde hair and a fake smile unlocked the heavy glass doors to let her in. Morning, Mrs. Brickley, she said. We can always count on you to be the first in through the door on a Monday morning, can't we? She added, with more than just a hint of sarcasm. There were two cashiers sat behind panes of bulletproof glass, and they buried their faces in their hands at the sight of Mrs. Brickley. One of them sighed loudly as she approached the desk with a clear plastic bag full of coins and wondered whether she did this on purpose just to torture them. Morning, boys, she said cheerily. Morning, Morning Mrs. Mrs. Brickley, they replied in unison. The bag of coins landed heavily on the counter in front of one of them, and he rubbed his tired eyes, knowing that he'd have to count it all twice, then write her out a blank check for the exact amount she was depositing. He slid the coins off the edge of the desk into the palm of his hand. 22.55, 22.65, he counted wearily adding to the neat little towers of coins that covered his desk. 2267. And that's 22 euros and 68 cents for the second time, Mrs. Brickley. She pressed her lips together, a little bit disappointed that she didn't reach her usual target of 30 euro, deciding that she'd have to get there earlier next Sunday if they were going to start turning on the fountain sooner. The cashier handed her a cheque for €22.68, Euro and, and as she waved goodbye to the cashier and his colleagues, they were relieved to see her leave for another week. The next phase of her plan required a short bus ride out of town into the countryside. She took her usual seat by the window on the right-hand side of the bus, and it wasn't long before the busy streets of Milan turned into quieter rural roads and the cluttered mass of buildings turned into open fields. 
She knew exactly where she was going and pressed the stop button with precision to alert the driver that she intended to get off. She skipped nimbly off the bus and took a moment to appreciate the fresh air of the countryside before looking up at the small farmhouse in front of her. It was set a little way in from the road and the gravel pathway crunched under her feet as she walked swiftly up to the front door. A large sign read, The Cosy Kennel, in black letters, and there were multicoloured paw prints dotted around. The front door opened with a gentle push, and a little bell rang automatically, followed by a symphony of dog barks from somewhere inside the building. A small woman appeared from behind the desk of the reception area, and came towards Mrs Brickley with her arms stretched out wide. Melissa, said the small woman in a high voice, kissing her once on each cheek. How lovely to see you again. Hello, Alice. It's great to see you too. And what a fine day it's turning out to be, said Mrs Brickley. Yes, it certainly is. And I have someone new to introduce you to today. Oh, how wonderful, replied Mrs Brickley as she pulled the check out of her bag and leant over Alice's desk to make it out to the cosy kennel. Alice put her hands out in front of her and said in a serious voice, Now, Melissa, we are very grateful for all of the donations you've given us over the years, but I've already told you that we can't accept any more of your money. And I've told you, replied Mrs Brickley playfully, that there's no need to go through this rigmarole every week, when we both know that I'm not leaving here until you do. And she was right. Alice knew perfectly well that there was no point in arguing and gratefully accepted the cheque. Melissa, you really are too kind. If only there were more people like you in the world. Oh, don't be silly. It's nothing, Alice. Honestly, it's just a bit of loose change. They walked through the reception area and out into the large garden, which was lined either side with wooden kennels painted in bright colours. Mrs. Brickley couldn't contain her excitement and called out in a loud voice, Pimpa, Kim, Dink, Patty, Buddy, Billy, Floyd. A variety of dogs ran out of their kennels towards Mrs. Brickley. Kim, a kind-natured Irish setter, got to her first and eagerly licked her outstretched hand. Next was Buddy, a jet-black Labrador puppy with a squeaky toy in its mouth followed by Dink, a manic border collie who nearly knocked Mrs Brickley over. Soon there was a whole crowd of wagging tails, all fighting for her attention, and she reached into her pocket for the dog biscuits she'd brought with her, loving every second of their company. Don't worry, there's enough for everyone, she reassured her furry friends, handing out the biscuits to them one by one. Follow me, said Alice, making her way across the lawn. I've got someone I'd like you to meet. And Mrs Brickley followed her up to a bright red brand new kennel. We only got this last Tuesday, said Alice, all thanks to your donations, of course. And as soon as we did, this little treasure showed up. Well, hello there, said Mrs Brickley, crouching down on the soft grass. A grunt came from inside the kennel as a fully grown British bulldog lifted its head and sniffed the air. <laughs> She's catching up on some much-needed rest, said Alice. Someone brought her in after they found her on a roundabout in the middle of a busy road. Poor thing. The dogs began to bark again as the bell above the front door and reception rang and a young boy came out into the garden, followed by his mum and dad. The man made a double take at Mrs Brickley as he half recognised her but couldn't quite remember from where exactly. Good afternoon, how can I help you? said Alice professionally, patting Kim on the head, who'd come over for some more attention. I hope you don't mind us barging in like this. We were just passing and wondered if we could have a look around, said the boy's mother in a sweet voice. Of course, right this way! Alice invited them into the garden to meet the dogs, and their son giggled as Kim licked his face. She likes you, said Mrs Brickley recognising him as a little boy who was at the fountain yesterday. He smiled shyly and went over to the new kennel with the bulldog inside. 
Mum, Dad, come quick, it's Polpetta! He shouted, jumping up and down with uncontrollable excitement. That's a bulldog, son, his father said as he bent over, peering inside. Yeah, I know. I wish Fru and the lady made it come true, he said, turning to his parents with his hands pressed tightly together. Can we keep her, please? His father smiled, slightly confused, and turned to Alice to ask her what the usual procedure was for rehousing dogs. Well, she explained, you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for us to give the dog all of her necessary vaccinations and to make sure no previous owners can be found. Follow me to the reception area and I'll take some details off you anyway. They disappeared back into the farmhouse, leaving Mrs. Brickley with the young boy, who was telling his new best friend all about what her new home was going to be like. His father was waving at him to get him to come inside, so he patted the bulldog on the head, promising her that they'd be back soon. He hesitated for a moment before running up to Mrs. Brickley and hugging her tightly around the legs. Thanks for making my wish come true, he said with a wide smile, then sprinted off towards his waiting parents. Mrs. Brickley sighed contently. She couldn't wait to come back next week to make another donation. And as she took a step towards the farmhouse, she felt her foot slide sideways on a freshly laid dog dropping and looked down at Kim, who was sniffing the lawn indifferently. Why, thank you, Kim, she laughed. But you really shouldn't have. She was just... <clears throat> and slipped into a pair, uh, frowning to let his... His parents yelled with surprise as he suddenly made a dash. He slid the coin... 